It's the three on Plex TV. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Plax back with another episode of The Three on Plax TV. I am back in the undisclosed location. As you could tell, um, I got my shirt untucked. I was told to untuck my shirt in, when I'm here because it make me look a little fatter than I actually am. That's what I was told by friends, so I <laughs> untucked my shirt. Um, and today's video... Uh, for the three on Plax TV is my play my NBA play-in predictions. Uh, so let's get right into it. So first we got uh, Miami versus Atlanta, the seven versus the eight seed, and playoff Jimmy, playoff Jimmy Butler is a very real thing. You know what I mean? Like he, when the playoffs come around, Jimmy turns into his dad. <laughs> And, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about with that. But, like, Jimmy, he, he definitely elevates his game during playoff time more than he would during the regular season. But at the same time, Trey Young is proven to be a killer in, in the postseason. Like, as as Rick calls him, ice trade a gang. He, he is definitely proven to be a killer in the postseason at times. But I, I got to go with Miami here because I feel like in this situation specifically, defense defense wins here because, you know, Atlanta at times could be a very great offensive team, um, sometimes even a top 10 offensive team, but they're consistently a terrible defensive team where on the other end, Miami ain't the greatest offensive team, but they're decent. You know what I'm saying? They middle of the road. But at times, their defense can be immaculate with Bam and Jimmy and Kyle Lowry. So, I feel like in this situation, in one game, I feel like defense wins out here. Um, unless Trey, like, goes crazy and drops 60, which he can, but I don't, I don't necessarily think he will. Uh, I think I'll go with Miami here to go on uh, to clinch the playoff spot. And then Atlanta loses, but they get one more game. They got one more chance to get into the playoffs. Um, that leads me to the second game in the East. The Raptors, the, the, the Chicago Raptors. Come on, man. The Chicago Bulls versus the Toronto Raptors. And this one's a little tough because... Um, like I was saying about like defense and stuff, Toronto is a great defensive team. They've been on and off all season, but they do have championship experience. The team that they have has been together for a while, so they have chemistry. Not that Chicago doesn't, but they have a lot of chemistry. Um, but the thing is, with Chicago, is they're a more talented team. Like De DeMar DeRozan has become a killer and a superstar. Zach Levine can always get his... You guys know how much I love Nikola Vucevic. I feel like he don't get enough credit like he should. They are missing Lonzo, which is which is big, but they still got Alex Caruso. They got the they role player guys like uh DeSumo. I think that's I think that's his name. I hope I'm saying his name right. So like they're and it's just one game. For this game specifically, I'm gonna say that talent wins this one game and tentatively uh, this is tough. tentatively I'm gonna go with Chicago to win Ugh, I don't know how I feel about that though I'm not super confident but you know Vu has gotten better defensively DeRozan has proven himself in the postseason as of late. Zach Levine is always, you know, a potential 30, 40 point game. Plus the role players. I feel like they inch it out against against Toronto. Mm, tentatively. Tentatively speaking, I'm gonna go with Chicago uh to make it to make it to the next well, not well, technically not the next round, because I believe they have to play Atlanta. 
at that point. Yeah, so... Okay, so if they have to play Atlanta... I say Chicago beats Atlanta at that point, And they clinch that last spot. That, that I guess, eighth seed spot. So I have uh, Miami clinching that seventh seed spot to play. I don't know who they'll play. I'll get into that in another video. But clinching that seventh, that seventh spot, I got Miami, Jimmy Butler in Miami. And then I got Chicago pulling it out and clinching that AFC spot. I'm not super confident in that because I feel like Toronto definitely has a chance to clinch that spot as well. But I, I'm a, I'm a lock in Chicago here. But that's that's it for the for the East for now. Over to the West, I'm gonna start backwards real quick. So OKC versus the Pelicans. <sighs> this is another tough one. Because SGA, not just SGA, but SGA has just been playing out of his mind all season. They, like, OKC has, like, overperformed and overachieved because of SGA. And the Pelicans are missing their best player in Zion. But at the same time, the Pelicans still has a very talented team. And in my opinion, they've underperformed all season. They still got B.I., Magnum B.I., Brandon Ingram. They still got C.J. McCollum. They still got Valence Eunice. They have a really good team, even without Zion playing. So it's tough to bet against them, especially in the one-game scenario. It's tough to, like, just count them out. But I really like OKC. I really like OKC. I love SGA. Josh Giddy, even though he's a clout hooper, he, he always plays well. I love Lou Dort. Great 3 and D guy. Potential to be more. Um, uh, Polky, they, they they power forward. Just like, I just really like that team. And it's tough to bet, bet against them too. <sighs> I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to say the Pels win this game. Right, the Pels win this game, and they and OKC ends up in the second game, the second chance that you get in the play in. So I say, uh, the Pels win this game, OKC moves on to the final, final game. And in this next game, the Lakers versus the Timberwolves, I got the Lakers. It's, I don't even really have too much to say about that, besides, uh, the Lakers have been clicking a lot lately. Um, they turned the whole season around by getting Vanderbilt and Trey and Russ and just they just turned the whole season. Austin Reeves is playing better. Um, AD seems like he's healthy. As long as he can stay healthy, they'll be fine. I see the Lakers clinching that seventh spot in the West. Again, I don't know who they'll be playing, but I will be getting into that in another video later on this week. Yeah, but I got the Lakers just beating the Timberwolves. I, I, I even think they could beat them decisively, to be completely honest. Mostly because they're just, they one, they've been clicking lately. They turn the whole season around. Two, they're a more talented team. They're a way more talented team on paper. They got LeBron and AD, first of all. And then they got Vanderbilt. And Austin Reeves has been playing out as my D-Lo. I can't forget about D-Lo. And D-Lo's mad. That's another thing. D-Lo mad that Minnesota kind of treated him like that. So that's that's a whole other can of worms. And people like to downplay D'Angelo Russell. But that motherfucker's cold. He's he's cold. And he's, he's big for the Lakers. I can't believe I, I almost forgot about him when I was talking about this. And also, on top of that. Um, Rudy Gobert is a bum. I call him Rudy Go Bum, and he just punched Kyle Anderson in the face on national television, and I think that's very bad. A very bad look for him. More of a bad look than he's already had, like his basically his whole career. Uh, he's just he's an overrated big, and he's getting paid way too much, way way too much for <sighs> mediocre work. Um, but that'll be a separate video that I'll talk about. And for those who'd be like, well, Draymond punched Jordan Poole in the face. Yes, he did. And that was wrong as well. But at least that was in the confines of practice. Um, and if 
nobody leaked that video from practice, nobody would have known about it besides like maybe a couple rumors here and there. But uh, Rudy Gobert punched his teammate in the face on national television. Um, and it's not like Rudy Gobert isn't as important to the Timberwolves as Draymond is to Golden State. <laughs> I'll say that. I'll say that confidently because I call him Rudy Go Bum for a reason. That's and I'm a lead at that. But I think the Lakers beat the Timberwolves and uh that third game for that last spot. So the Lakers go on and clinch that seventh spot. And that sets up the Timberwolves versus OKC. OKC beats the Timberwolves and gets that last spot. That's just oh wait. Is that how that goes? Oh no, wait. If the Lakers clinch the spot, then the Lakers beat the Timberwolves, they clinch the spot. OKC. Oh, OKC would be out. Oh no. So the Pels would play the Timberwolves then. Based off of what I how I put it together, it's uh, it's because I mixed it up in my notes. My bad, y'all. So the Pels would play uh, Minnesota, and I think the Pels beat Minnesota as well. It's mostly it's mostly because of Rudy Gobum. I just I don't believe in him at all. Towns as great as he is, Towns got like this very soft side to him, and I just don't think. He's missing like that edge to take him to the next level, and Rudy Gobert being there ain't like really helping him. Um, Anthony Edwards, as great as he is as well, his supporting cast with Towns and Gobert isn't like really helpful to him in his game. So I just don't see him changing the tide too much. So I see uh, the Lakers getting a seven, and I see the Pelicans getting an eight. I don't doubt OKC could get that eight. Uh, but no matter what, regardless, either I'm going with the Pels, I'm locking in the Pels, kind of like with the Chicago thing. I'm locking in the Pels, but I believe uh, OKC had the chance. And no matter how it goes, the Timberwolves is out. <laughs> that's I guess that's my bottom line. The Lakers clinched at seven, and it's that other spot is between OKC and the Pels, basically. So, yeah, so I have... Uh, how did I do it? I have Miami and Chicago is seven and eight in the East. And I have the Lakers and the Pels is seven and eight in the West. And I will be doing a separate video about once the playing is over about uh, my predictions for each uh, playoff series for both sides, the East and the West. I might make them separate. I might do them separate. So it's not like, so the video not too long. Because this was just singular games, like a few games, and this is almost like 15 minutes. So maybe I'll do a Eastern Conference uh, playoff predictions, and I'll do just for the first round, a Eastern Conference first round playoff predictions, and a Western Conference uh, first round playoff predictions video, and I'll put them out at the same time or something like that. But y'all let me know what y'all think. Um, did I, I, I feel like I, I confused myself a little bit. I think I mixed up like how they do it or something like that because I wrote my notes backwards towards the end but uh let me know what you think of my predictions uh do you think I'm crazy do you think I'm going a little too hard on Rudy Gobert <laughs> um uh what do you think about the Lakers do you think the Lakers have a chance to go far I do depending on who they playing though I don't know who they'll be playing I have to look into that depending on who they playing they could go far but I don't know. They have been clicking, and this new look Lakers team has been playing very well. So, and you can't really go wrong with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It's just very touchy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, sorry. Let me rephrase. A healthy LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you can't go wrong with. But again, join the conversation. Let me know what you think of my predictions in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the other episodes of Three on Plax TV. I talk about a whole bunch of stuff uh, that the NBA, the WNBA, college basketball, women's college basketball, men's college basketball. We talk about a lot of basketball here. Uh, but without further ado, uh, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ding that notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. And most of all, YouTube.
I love you guys. Peace. It's the three on Black TV. Oh, yeah.